Good morning, Lee University. We're so glad that you've chosen to log on and worship with us. Wherever you might be this morning, let's lift our voices and sing together.
everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. And new wind is blowing right now, breaking my heart of stone, taking over like it's Jericho. thankful this morning that every promise that you give is true and you are faithful to fulfill it. Your word is yes and amen. Whatever dreams you've put in our hearts and in our lives, we know, Lord, that you will bring them to be. And we trust you for that this morning, regardless of the way the circumstances around us look this morning. We declare that we put our hope and our trust in you and we know that you will deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome back to Chapel, the University family. We are so excited that you have clicked back in with us this week. And uh, we're so excited that God is doing some great things around the campus. We've heard so many good reports about what God is doing through our small groups, about what God is doing through the chapel uh, recordings. And so we want to encourage you to stay in touch with us. Let us know how you're doing. If you have a prayer request, I want you to email me at campusministries at leeuniversity.edu, and we're going to make sure that we take the time to pray for you. Also share with us your praise reports. And so we want to know all the great things that God is doing, so please stay connected. Now, today's speaker I'm very excited to introduce. He is our Vice President of Ministerial Development, currently serves as our Chair for Christian Ministries, and he's also the next President of Lee University. And so it is my honor today to welcome Dr. Mark Walker. Thank you, Pastor Rob, and hello, everybody. I pray you're doing well uh, wherever you are. I want to talk to you today about when a dream derailed is really a dream delayed. David Livingston was an 18th century uh, missionary, and he had a dream, a heart to go win Africa for Jesus Christ. But he knew if the gospel was really going to penetrate that country, he had to win or at least get into a certain region. And the custom of that region was this, that when a visitor approached the borders, they were to wait for the king to come out to them. And when the king came to them, they were opened up all their possessions to 
the king, and he would look at their possessions, and if there was something he liked, he would take it for himself, and in exchange, he would give the visitor something of his own that would give them entree into the land. And so there Livingston stood at the border, his, his goods laid before him, and here came the king. And Livingston didn't have much. He had some clothes, he had some books, a clock, but his prized possession, believe it or not, was a goat because he enjoyed the goat milk. The goat milk would soothe his stomach because, uh, from the Af- African water. And he believed he had to have that goat in order to physically be able to carry out the mission God had for him. Well, guess what? The king took the goat and in exchange gave Livingston what he believed was a walking stick. Livingston was enraged. He was livid. He got angry with God and complained to God and said, God, I don't understand. You knew how much I needed that goat. If I'm going to carry out this dream you have for me, this mission, I'm not going to be physically able to do that without this goat. He said, I don't know what I'm going to do with this walking stick. And what Livingston thought was a dream derailed was actually, what we'll find out in a moment, was a dream delayed. And when I think of this idea, I also think of the story of Joseph. In the Old Testament, Genesis 37 through Genesis 50, we see the story of Joseph. Joseph was the son of Jacob, but Jacob had 12 other sons that eventually became the 12 tribes of Israel. Joseph, at the age of 17, had a dream, a God dream. And he saw his 12 brothers actually bowing down to him, serving him at some point in time, and him being in power and in leadership over them. Well, I don't believe that Joseph had in mind what was going to happen in his life before that dream ever became fulfilled. Basically, look at the story. It looks like a dream derailed, but it really is a dream delayed. So let me walk you through what Joseph encountered and bring it back to where we are today. First, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers because they were jealous of him. And he ends up in the land of Egypt and Potiphar, who was the captain of the Egyptian guard, he takes him into his home as a slave. But Joseph works so well, Potiphar puts him in charge of his entire household. Potiphar didn't worry about a thing that was under Joseph's care. Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with Joseph and she tried to seduce him, but Joseph resisted her. But at one point in time, she actually physically tries to pull him into her bedchamber and Joseph breaks away from her and runs off and she has his coat in her hand. She's angered and hurt by his rejection. So she tells her husband Potiphar that Joseph tried to have his way with her. Potiphar believes her and ends up putting Joseph in prison and he was innocent. Joseph is in prison and guess what? He does his work so well that the warden puts Joseph in charge of the entire cell block and didn't worry about anything that was under Joseph's care. Pharaoh, who was the ruler of the entire Egyptian land, he puts his cupbearer and his baker in prison because of something they did wrong. They have dreams, but they don't know what these dreams mean. Joseph is able to interpret the dreams, and he basically tells the baker, you're going to be executed in three days. But to the cupbearer, he said, in three days, you're going to be restored back to Pharaoh's court. And Joseph tells this cupbearer, says, hey, when you go back to Pharaoh, remember me to Pharaoh. Tell him about me. I, have, I was forced into slavery by my family. I'm in prison, falsely accused. I don't need to be here. Get me out of here. The cupbearer says, I got you, Joseph. And what happens when he gets back in Pharaoh's court? It says he forgot Joseph. And Joseph was in prison two more years, sold into slavery for nothing wrong, put in prison falsely, and then forgotten, totally isolated and secluded It seems like a dream derailed. But then Pharaoh has a dream, and his advisors can't interpret the dream. The cupbearer remembers, hey, there's this dude back in prison that can interpret dreams. Let me go get him. His name's Joseph. Brings him to Pharaoh, says, Joseph, what's my dream? Joseph says, hey, I can't tell you, but God can. Joseph seeks God, and here was the dream that Pharaoh had. There would be seven years of plenty of prosperity in Egypt, followed by seven years of devastating famine, So they needed to be prepared for that famine in those seven years of prosperity. And Joseph gave out a plan. Pharaoh said, that's perfect. And he put Joseph in charge of the entire nation of Egypt. The only person in greater power than Joseph was Pharaoh. Well, seven years of plenty pass, and guess what? Famine 
hits the region. Even up in Canaan where Joseph's family is. And they hear there's food in Egypt, so they migrate down to Egypt. And what happens? They encounter Joseph and his 12 brothers fall in repentance, in essence, before his feet and says, make us your slaves. You know what Joseph says to them? He says, guys, get up. What you intended for evil, God did for good. God's the one that sent me here. God's the one that put me here. And he brought me here to save lives. And Joseph's dream was fulfilled. It wasn't a dream derailed. It was a dream delayed. None of you watching this, especially you students, imagined anything that's taking place right now in this world. The dream you had, the ambitions you had, the goals you had for this semester seem like they have been derailed, especially you seniors. You feel like your senior year has been ripped out of your hands. Many of you, you feel isolated, you feel secluded. You feel like you're in prison just like Joseph was. You feel like you're enslaved. You had no idea what, this, all, what was gonna happen. And you feel like it's been torn away from you. And in many ways, that ambition, that dream, that goal has been derailed. But I wanna encourage you I believe it's just a dream that's going to be delayed. Because when you look at Joseph, I believe there's two things when you look at the story of Joseph that helped Joseph hold to the dream when he could have let it go. And the first thing is this. Two places it says, but the Lord was with Joseph. In Genesis 39, I believe it's verse two, when he's enslaved and he's enslaved in Potiphar's house, you know what it says? But the Lord was with Joseph and gave him favor. Then when he's thrown in prison, it says when Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with him and gave him success. Here's what you need to know. The same Lord that was with Joseph when it seemed like his dream was derailed, when he was involved in things that weren't his fault, is the same Lord that's with you. And you gotta know that the Lord is with you right now. The Lord, that none of this has taken the Lord by surprise. And he's at work where you are. And I encourage you, see God, find the Lord where you are and in what you're doing. You have to know the Lord is with you. And the second thing about this story of Joseph is this, that Joseph served well where he was. He served with excellence where he was. He served with integrity. He worked hard where he was. He could have gotten angry with God. He could have gotten embittered. He could have just turned his back on God. He could have gotten lazy. He could have just chunked in the towel and say, forget all of this, but he doesn't. He works hard. He serves God well. He, he works with integrity. I want to say to you where you are right now, even though you don't like it per se, even though it's something that's so uncomfortable for you, it would be easy to get lazy right now. It would be easy to make all the excuses and say, well, I can just chunk everything in. Don't do that. Serve with excellence. Be in your Zoom classes on time, ready to go. Attack your assignments with the integrity and the energy that you would if you were here right on campus. See, your dream isn't derailed. It's just delayed. And it may turn out different than what you anticipated, but God's with you and serve him well where you are. Because here's what happened with Joseph. He discovered God in a whole new way at the end of his journey. See, he thought his dream was about him being in power over his brothers. But what he came to realize, it wasn't about him at all. It was about a greater plan and a greater purpose that God had. And it wasn't about him being in power. It's about him serving his brothers and preserving the remnant of the covenant people that God had put together. You see, when you hear Joseph say, hey guys, it's not you that put me here. It's God who sent me here. It's almost as if Joseph is saying, I wouldn't change a thing in my journey, guys. Yeah, there was loss and it was painful, but where I am now and I see how this dream has unfolded, I wouldn't change a thing. Your dream isn't derailed. It's just delayed because the Lord's with you. So serve well where you are. 
See, David Livingston discovered that. Going back to our missionary at the beginning of the story or the beginning of this talk, the king has taken his goat and he's received what he believes a walking stick. But what he discovers is that it wasn't a walking stick at all. It was actually the, king, it was actually the king's scepter. And anywhere he went in that land and he presented the king's scepter, he was received as if he was the king. And the gospel penetrated Africa and missionary after missionary came and the gospel went all throughout that continent. See, Livingston's dream wasn't derailed. It was just delayed. The Lord is with you. Serve well where you are. The gain will far outweigh the loss you're feeling right now. It isn't derailed. It's just delayed. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for these students. I thank you for the faculty, anybody else that might be watching at this time that's feeling this sense of loss, that's feeling like what they believed you had promised, what they believed you had showed them, the dreams, the ambitions they believe were going to happen at this time in their lives just seem to be slipping out of their hands. I pray right now there's a whole new sense of assurance within them that you are with them, you haven't forgotten them, and your plans are coming to pass in their lives. And believe, may that be for all of us to believe that, Father God. And may we all serve well where we are. May we honor you where we are. May we do good work where we are. May we serve others where we are. May we serve and live with integrity where we are, God. And we, I believe with all my heart, at the end of this journey, the gain is going to far outweigh the loss. And now, Father, we say together, a college benediction. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless.